Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Today, we're going to have some fun because I have about four different techniques I'm going to do on this card. I am just in the mood for some coloring techniques and just getting inky and just playing with stuff. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to be using the You Give Me Butterflies bundle. have to get at least one more card out of this bundle before this bundle retires and we break it all up to buy individually. I love to to use this bundle so much and I'm excited about today. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hola, everybody. How Happy are you? afternoon. I'm better than horrible. So Gina's in the mood to get inky. I am. I'm excited today. We're going to use embossing powder, which I haven't used for a while. And our embossing powder sale is still on until the end of the day. And I promised myself that if I was going to put embossing powder and embossing folders on sale, that we were going to use them in some techniques. Um, and we did embossing folders with Simon Hurley on Tuesday night. So today I'm using embossing powder. All right, we're getting out of the way. And so you know what else I'm going to use today? Gamsol and colored pencils. Okay. And something else too. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> so let's get messy. All okay, right. so I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using today. So this is the stamp set. And you guys have seen this stamp set so many times already. This is the You Give Me Butterfly stamp set. Now, this has a layering stencil, so you can color all of these images in. But I'm going to be coloring differently today, and I'm going to be using this butterfly, which I have here on an acrylic block. I'm also going to be using the coordinating die set, maybe, but I think only for the greeting on this one. So let me get a piece of cardstock here that I can work on. And we are going to stamp on colored cardstock today. So I don't want to rush. I'm not a person to rush the seasons, right? I still feel like it's summer big time here in Wisconsin, and I'm not giving up on summer. But I am going to use some faded brick today, which I think is a beautiful autumn color. So if you're thinking about, you know, autumn and getting into leaves and things like that, butterflies for autumn, these colors are beautiful. So faded brick is the color that I'm going to use today. I'll get out of your way here, Tom, in case you want to post anything. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm up here. And then I'm going to be using the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink pad. This is also on sale along with the gold and all of our colors of embossing powder. So I'm going to be using this ink pad today. And then I'm going to be using the embossing magic pad. Now I'm going to first take the embossing magic pad. If you're new to embossing, this is a really great thing to use because it removes static. It removes any oil or anything that's on your cardstock. And it helps your embossing powder only stick to the embossing ink rather than being staticky and stuck to the cardstock. So I'm going to rub this all over. I like to pat some down first and then rub it all over the cardstock. Okay. So then I'm going to stamp this butterfly image. Now I'm going to stamp one in the center, nice and big. And then I'm going to stamp kind of haphazardly on the four corners. But you know what I think I'm going to do first? I'm going to cut this down because I want this to be a little bit smaller and I want to make sure that I place all my butterflies in a good spot. So I'm going to cut this down to three and a half. You could cut this with master layouts too, but I'm just going to cut it with my paper cutter here. Three and a half by four and three quarters. That's the size I really want this to be. And that's going to help because then I won't need, you know, I won't space out my butterflies too much. So now that I've touched the cardstock again, I'm going to go back over it with that embossing magic pad. And then I'm going to ink up this butterfly using the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink. 
So if you didn't catch the reason I use this, it's to remove any static and any oil or anything from the cardstock. And that helps the embossing powder just stick to the ink and not everywhere else. Now that doesn't mean it won't stick a little bit to other places and you might have to brush some away, but for the most part, it does help eliminate a lot of that. So I really want to get this image inked up really well. I'm not using the Misty for this because I'm going to be moving it all around. So I want to get a good impression the first time. So my first one's just going to go right here in the middle. That's going to be my main butterfly. Okay. I love everything with butterflies too. Oh, that looks great. Now I'm going to use my embossing powder right away here while this ink is as wet as it's going to be. You don't have to rush too much with embossing and watermark ink, but you also don't want to let it dry too long before you start doing this or you're not going to get um, a good amount of embossing powder on there. So I know that that looks very dull. You can't see it, but you will be able to see it once I heat emboss it. Now I'm going to stamp a few more butterflies and I could wait until the end, but I just want to get as much embossing powder on here as possible. So we're going to stamp probably four more, but not full butterflies, obviously. So we'll get a wing up here in this corner. And I'm going to do the same thing, get my embossing powder on there. There we go. Then we're going to do another wing. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see all of you here today. And you can see how I turned that one. I want them all kind of turned in different directions. So this one will kind of go over here like this. So Ali's wondering how you would use a butterfly in a Christmas card. Oh. I'm thinking a little hat. You think of a little hat? <laughs> A little candy cane holding on to its wing. Um, I would do... Butterfly um, drawn sleigh. <laughs> I would do um, the butterfly and I might add it to a wreath or maybe have it like maybe landing on a poinsettia leaf, something like that. And definitely I would color the butterfly maybe in shades of red and gold. And I think that would be beautiful. And remember, you know, we celebrate Christmas up north in the cold weather, but it's Christmas everywhere at the same time. And there's a lot of warm weather places. So there are probably lots of butterflies on Christmas morning in places. Okay. So you can see how I'm filling this all in. And like I said, if you're just tuning in, you don't have to put the embossing powder on between each butterfly but I'm kind of taking my time and I'm a little pokey with my getting it all inked up. So I would rather make sure that I get the embossing powder on there and get it stuck to that embossing ink than to wait and have areas be a little more dry. Oh my gosh, mittens on the antennas. Wouldn't that be so cute? <laughs> but see, we're all thinking like cold weather people. I'll come right in here like this. Okay. Pick it up carefully, not to touch the areas that have embossing powder on them. Now, if I wanted to, I could add another little wing in here, and I think I will. I'm going to add two more little spots. I'm just going to ink half of this up because I don't need too much here. I'm going to just tuck that in right there just because I feel like it needs to be filled in. It'll look really pretty. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom with a little bit right there. Okay. Okay. 
just like that. I like the way it looks just with the watermark ink too, because that will stay that color as it dries. And it's kind of a nice way to get a coordinating color on whatever cardstock you're using. When you use watermark ink, that's the watermark part of embossing and watermark ink is that it will dry, but it will dry leaving that watermark behind. So it's a really nice ink to have in your collection. And that cardstock is faded brick? This is faded brick, yes. So I'm going to get my clothes pin out. I'm going to be careful here. And then I'm going to put the clothes pin in a place where there isn't any embossing powder. I like using a clothes pin a little bit more than tweezers for this because, because tweezers are made of metal and that conducts heat where the clothes pin is made of wood. And so it doesn't get hot. I'm going to wipe my table down here too. Just give me a second because I don't want to burn my embossing powder into my table. Okay. So I'm going to use my heat tool. And people asked the other night what heat tool I was using. And I use a Wagner heat tool. You can get those at any of your bigger craft stores. Any of your, A lot of your local craft stores carry them. It's a great heat tool. And um, it embosses really quickly. Okay, so now you're going to see the magic. This is, I got to tell you guys, this is the technique that got me hooked on stamping. When I saw this embossing for the very first time, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this forever. Okay, so I like to heat my tool up a little bit first because if you heat it up first, the air is going to be super hot and it's going to emboss more quickly. If you heat, if you don't preheat your, your uh, tool a little bit, it, your paper gets a little more warpy. All right, here we go. So we're going to start right here. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So you can see the embossing magic pad did its job. It definitely prevented gold flecks from getting anywhere else. And this image is nice and crisp. It's so pretty. Now I like to make sure that everything is heated up. So I go over it one more time, but I don't stay anywhere too long because I don't want to burn the powder. If you burn the powder, the shine goes away. It, it looks kind of flat. So if your embossing looks kind of flat and it doesn't have that shine to it, um, then you might be just heat overheating it a little bit. Now, I see a little spot there that probably could get heated a little more. I'm hoping I didn't overheat it, but it looks a little flat right there. So I'm just going to... That looks good. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Sorry, I dropped my Windex. Um, and we are going to get to the next part of our technique. Now, once this is all done and you've got that beautiful embossing, that's pretty just the way it is, isn't it? Love that. Now we're going to play with some bleach. Yes, regular household Clorox bleach. I know not everybody likes bleach. Some people say that it bothers them. It does not bother me at all. I, I use bleach when I do my, you know, my white towels and stuff. I, it doesn't bother me. I guess maybe I'm a little old school, but bleach just isn't a bother to me. If it bothers you, you might have to forego this part and you might have to just color with darker colors than whatever color, you know, you, you used for your card base. Um, I know that some people have had luck with the bleach pen because it's not as bleachy smelling, but it's, this doesn't bother me at all. And if it doesn't bother you, it's a super cool technique. So I have a little bit of bleach here in this container just a little glass. I don't work from the bottle at all. And I'm going to bleach just, just parts of this. So yeah, we do carry our own brand of embossing powder. In fact, until midnight tonight, it's on sale for 20% off. Okay. And I am going to paint with this uh, bleach and this tiny little watercolor brush. So I bought this watercolor brush. This was not a cheap brush. And I bought it because I wanted to learn to watercolor and I did not learn to watercolor. 
but I use it to brush away, <laughs> you know, um, excess embossing powder, very expensive brush tool, but it is a great brush for using with bleach, but it's not important to have an expensive brush. Just use an a brush that has a tiny tip because you get a little bit more control. Now, the reason why I'm not just stamping and using bleach is because when you stamp and you use bleach, the ink bleaches too. And the other thing that's nice about embossing first is the embossing is raised. So the bleach stays a little more contained within the areas that you want to bleach. It almost has like a little rim around it and it holds it in there. Um, I don't know if the bleach has to be a certain percentage. I just use the bleach that I buy at the grocery store. So I don't know what the percentage of bleach is in here. I don't know that it says it on here anywhere, but you could probably look on Clorox's website to see what the percentage is. You could maybe try diluting it in water a little bit and see if that works, but I'm just using it straight. And I will tell you that new bleach works better than old bleach. You can try to d dilute it, Peggy. I haven't tried that because I just use it straight, but you certainly can try. The thing is, is that don't ever worry about whether or not you can try something. Just try it and see what happens. It's one little piece of cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to start by coloring in these, just some of the large parts of the butterflies. So you can already see that color starting to lift. I'm not going to color all the spots. I'm going to alternate and just color some of them. And I'm going just a hair outside of the lines. But if I don't get it all, like I can go back and add a little more into any areas that don't look fully bleached. So can you see how they're starting to come up? It's such a pretty color that they come up too. That would have been a good time for an explosion sound, but I don't have one. Just try it. <laughs> <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> I don't think dil diluting uh, would be worse. Probably, <laughs> probably less of an explosion. But you know, I would if you're going to mix bleach with anything, I would say only mix it with water. And it doesn't affect the embossing at all. Nope, doesn't affect the embossing at all. Isn't that cool? Look how pretty it is. And what's really fun about using the bleaching technique is your colors, depending on what colors you use, will come up so interesting. Like, I just didn't expect this beautiful yellow to show up on faded brick. Um, so what you might want to do is get little squares of your cardstock, stamp an image on it, and just bleach each one so that you know what color the center is going to come out. Because this is really pretty and you can you could match your card base to the color that it bleaches up to if you wanted, you know, find something similar to that. And then I'll tell you, if you run your heat tool over this, it comes up really vibrant and bright. So this is the first part of the technique we're bleaching. Okay. Let's see here. I got to match the other side. This is the biggest one to do. The rest will be easy because there's just little bits and pieces of them. The smell goes away, right? Oh, yeah. I can barely smell it right now. I'm not, but like I said, I'm not sensitive to bleach. It doesn't bother me at all. I bleach everything. Not everything, but everything, you know, white sheets or white towels, things like that. Tom's underwear. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to do the same areas on all of these. Luckily, there's just small parts of these showing, so I don't have to do it all. But it's nice to kind of match the same areas you did on. Let's see, that's, yeah, I'm going to do that there. And it's actually a very relaxing technique. It's kind of like a magic paint because it comes up whatever color that cardstock is going to let it come up to. You can really see some of the colors that um, were put together 
in order to make the cardstock color. Okay. So this obviously faded brick has a lot of yellow in it. So have you bleached every color of your cardstock, except white, of course? I have. And I'll tell you, not all of them come up. I mean, I was trying black, and for some reason that didn't come up at all. So our black must be really, really highly pigmented. It is a very dark black. But um, I was playing, and I'll show you just a little, a quick little sample. I was playing with this color yesterday. This is blue denim. And look at the turquoise color that came up. I just did that in white embossing powder and did that with turquoise. I mean, I did that with bleach, and that's what color it came up, turquoise. So... You got to try things. I also did an embossing folder. I did our snowflake embossing folder and I just bleached inside the areas and that came up all turquoise. So it's just so fun. Yeah, sorry about your underwear, Tom. I think people are telling me I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> well, and the worst part of it all is that I don't have any white underwear. <laughs> and you do now. <laughs> No, it's kind of like off gray. It's like tie dye. <laughs> it's funny. You start playing with the technique and you got to see what happens. <laughs> Give me that underwear. I want to see what happens. <laughs> okay. Just a couple more little spots here. I know the snowflakes are wild, aren't they? The embossing. You could do the leaves too. The leaf embossing folder has all those open leaves in it. And that's really fun to, to bleach as well. You just have to make sure you, you know, when you're doing those that you use a almost a drier brush and you just go into those little areas because um, the cardstock around the outside isn't embossed. And so that's going to turn as well. I just love how like vibrant this is getting. It's so cool. Just taking my time. I'm not rushing the process here. I need to do my nails. Looks like all the other YouTubers I know have really pretty nails. And mine are just basic crafters nails. <laughs> Now everybody knows where the word of the day dunderwear came from. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why you only have three rings left. <laughs> I bleached them all away. <laughs> I didn't mean to. My mom was a big bleach fan. So, you know how you, you learn from your mom how to do things like laundry and stuff and so I just always did it. I know that a lot of people don't like it, but. We live out in the country. And so we have a lot of, um, is it rust that we have in our water, Tom? Uh, well, it's well water from yeah. like the, the city well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's iron. Iron, yeah, iron. So, you know, a lot of our stuff, when you wash it, can take on a little bit of a yellowish hue. It has a hue. All right, I think I got everything. Close enough, maybe right here, I didn't get this, right in there. You start to notice what you missed when you get to the next step. But that's just so fun and just such a different look. And this butterfly is so good for coloring. Now, I've done butterflies in the past where I bleached the entire thing. This time, I've chosen just to do a couple. Here's the color Craft comes up to. That's kind of a neat yellow as well. But these, I just love the turquoise in these. So fun. Did I miss the other wing? The other wing. All right. Oh, here. I think they're talking about here. Very good. 
very, very good. So it's this right here. This. And this. Okay, so Jennifer checked the website and didn't see a sale price. They have to use a code, right? Yeah, the code is emboss20. So Tom will put that up. Okay, so I'm going to just hit this with my heat tool. And then you could see it'll even come up brighter, like areas that are a little yellow still will come up even whiter. But I'm not might even do it a little more from the back because I don't want to burn the embossing powder. So I'm just heating it. This is kind of the same concept as if you go and get your hair highlighted. Sometimes they put a little heat on it to get it to come up brighter. Same thing here. You're just getting that to come up a little bit brighter with heat. All right. So there we go. Now we've got that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here now. Hopefully that's not too close. It doesn't get blurry. Does that still look pretty crisp? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to add some colored pencil. Now here's the thing. I've tried water coloring over bleach and it bleaches out the water color. I've tried using Copic markers over bleach. Kind of bleaches out the Copic markers a little bit. But the colored pencil seems to work really well because, um, and of course, if I let it dry for a good long time, it would probably be fine. But, you know, I'm impatient and I want to get on with it. So colored pencils have wax in them. And I think the wax really helps to, um, you know, not let the bleach bleach it out. Okay. So we'll let that, we'll just dry that up a little bit here. I'm going to make sure I got all that. There was some faded brick showing that I wasn't a fan of. Look at the back. <laughs> all right, so we'll start with this big one in the center. Now I'm going to use some colored pencils. So the first colored pencil I want to use is terracotta. So I'm going to color over these yellow areas right in here with terracotta. Get some terracotta in there. You can see I'm just coloring some nice solid color. And then now I'm going to use the other chemical that a lot of people don't like. This is chemical day at Gina K Designs. I'm going to use some Gamsol. Now Gamsol is an artist grade odorless mineral spirits. It's very safe to use. Um, don't use odorless mineral spirits that you get at like Home Depot or anything like that. You definitely want to use an artist grade. And people say, oh, it's all the same thing. Well, no, it's not all the same thing. I mean, it's kind of no different than like wine and vinegar, you know, they all come from grapes, but wine, the process is a little better with wine um, and different. And so this is a little bit different. So what you want to do is you want to use a blending stump. And these are the Creative Mark blending stumps. We do carry these on our website. Now, when you dip into odorless mineral spirits, you don't want to just do that. That's not enough odorless mineral spirits on there. You want to put your blending stump in there and let it suck in some of the odorless mineral spirits, some of the Gamsol, because you need it to be a little bit more saturated in order to get a good blend. All right, so now we're going to work this color down and see how I'm just like going back and forth and just pulling it down until it just kind of fades into nothingness. So I'm just blending that in there. I'm do the same thing over here. I'm not done with this colored pencil, but this is my, my first go around. There we go. 
This is very artsy. It's not that crisp kind of coloring that you're used to seeing from me. This is more arty, art journal-y kind of, not so perfect, but definitely better than horrible. Same thing here. Just rubbing back and forth on it. And just to clarify, you are coloring and blending over the bleached areas. Over the bleach. Yep. Just over the bleached areas right now. A little more gamsol on there. So you can see now that's kind of bringing that color in. Now, if you feel like you need a little bit more, you can always go back and add a little more pencil in there because the other sides seem to come out a little bit more. Then I'm going to go back in with that colored pencil and I'm going to just flick a little bit of color like that, just to make some tiny little lines in there. You want your pencil to be as sharp as you can make it for this. So can you see it? added that little bit of texture in there. Can they see those little lines, Tom? The little lines? The little, like, flick marks with the pencil? Ah, uh, barely. Barely. Should I bump down the exposure so they can see it better? You can add a tiny little bit to these areas, too. I see it in some of them, the one on the left. One. Okay. And remember, I'm going to take a picture of this so you guys are going to be able to see all of this in those pictures. I'm adding a tiny little circle on each one of these. And then I'm going to take the Gamsol and just pull that color out a little bit. Isn't that pretty? That just adds so much. It's really hard for us to decide how bright to make the overhead shot, but can you guys see that adding that little bit of color in there? Um, Deborah, our, my videos are on Facebook, so they'll stay in the Facebook group and on our page and they're also on YouTube and they're very easy to find on YouTube because it's just all videos and you can go back and you know there's a tab for lives there's a tab for just regular videos and you can find the videos very quickly okay so now that's that's that so let's do a couple of these other ones then I'm gonna start with the just the color and we'll do our little dots right in these corners. I can't wait till you see the pictures up close because it's, it's pretty. And then we'll add the Gamsol. Pull that color out. That's gonna be mostly color in there. And of course the Gamsol will dry, but you can see it's not, it's not um, bleaching out. Like the, like if you used watercolor, like by the time you got to here, those first areas are like gone. I, so don't, just don't use watercolor because it just doesn't work as well. And now I'm gonna sharpen up my pencil a little bit. That pencil sharpener needs a battery. 
I'm going to add those little flicks in there. I don't even know if you'd see one there, but I have to do it just, you know, <laughs> just to pretend something's happening. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. These are all so much easier because there's not many of them. Those little dots. Now I know that my colored pencil girls out there and guys that really, you know, are colored pencil artists are probably looking at this technique and saying, what are you doing? And that's okay. <laughs> um, I am definitely a crafter, not necessarily an, a colored pencil artiste, but I like to have fun with this stuff and this makes it look a little bit more artistic. It just feels really, um, really soft and pretty. And then a couple little flicks of that sharp pencil. Okay, so you guys see how that's coming? Oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you. I know a lot of you guys say, stop saying that you're not an artist. And I, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. I don't like to say I'm an artist because I feel like in some ways it devalues the people who really put time into learning the craft of colored pencil and seeing all the light and everything. But I definitely am artistic, artsy. Artsy craftsy, <laughs> as we all are. We all have our specialties of what uh, what we do. So thank you, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it. So Tom, while I'm finishing up these butterflies, might you have a word of the day? Okay, I've got a very simple word of the day. Oh, you do? Yeah, so uh, if you ever wonder where words come from sometimes, even if it's not correct, sometimes you think this is where it probably came from. So everybody <laughs> knows what a guarantee is, right? Guarantee is like promise, you buy this, um, and it breaks, we'll fix it. Guarantee, 100% guarantee. On the other hand, a warranty, if you have a warranty, that pretty much means, yeah, we'll help you out, but you're going to have to go to war with us. A warranty. A warranty. <laughs> warranty it means there's a war involved. A war somewhere. waiting for you. <laughs> right? Those where it's like, oh, great, it's got a warranty. Limited warranty. <laughs> So, yeah, you're going to war. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> All right. Can you put the comments back on for me? Thank you. <laughs> Tom needs to, to compile a book of his words of the day. I keep telling him. We don't want to forget them. And as we get older, we don't want to repeat them. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times Tom has come to me and said, I have a word of the day. And I'm like, did we use that one already? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gosh. Okay. So. Just this and this. And these are just tiny dots. But I'm not done here because I think 
we're going to do something with the faded brick parts too. Just get a little on the side there. I feel like I have to do a little bit on everything. I like this color. This color that I'm using is um, terracotta. So terracotta works really well with the um, with the faded brick. All right, now. So now we have that done, and that looks pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. So now I have a black raspberry pencil here. Black raspberry is pretty dark, and I'm going to fill in these areas here with a little black raspberry. And I'm just going to do a real light touch here just to get a little bit of depth in the center. You can go real dark in the center if you want. And then just pull it out a little bit. Just in these four right here. See that that gives a little more depth in there, right? Compared to that one. See that deepness? See how I bleached over here a little bit? I'm just going to go in with the colored pencil there. Had a little slip up. If you get colored pencil on the embossing powder, you can just rub it off. It really doesn't stick. Your question, does the bleach bring up the tooth of the paper? Not, not too bad. Um, it can if you over bleach or you just really like keep working over an area over and over again. It can make it more kind of toothy or pilly. Um, but for the most part, if you just put a little bleach on it and let the bleach do its thing, no. So I think I'm going to use a little Gamsol on th this as well. Just bring that color out a little. Oh, look at that. All right. There's there's a you missed a spot alarm from McKellie. Okay. Uh, lower right wings, red dots. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Michele from Sweden, I believe. Thank you very Stand much. Stand up late to keep you in line. Yes. I need it. Okay, so I feel like the Gamsol blending that out really made a difference. Let me fix these. Wait a minute now. Oh, yes, here. When do I got those? Was it upside down when she said it, maybe? Does anybody see that? Because I did the red dots on these. And I did the red dots on here. Did the red dots here, here, and here, here. Here. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe I'll see it. Oh, I love when that Gamsol hits this color and the depth that you get out of that. I'm probably just not seeing it. smooths that all out so pretty. And there should be a little right here. Top on the left. Oh my gosh. Here? Isn't this the left on the top? I see a red dot there and there. Tom, what am I missing? Tom? Uh, 
I don't see it. All right, well, when I post the picture, somebody will take a screenshot and circle it and send it to me and I'll fix it. <laughs> Bugs me when I can't see what I'm supposed to be seeing. Right, right side of card. Mm -hmm. but right I, I keep side turning of it. butterfly, Mary says. Right side of the The butterfly in the middle. I know I keep turning it, so probably by the time their comment comes through, you know, I flipped it around already. Probably driving them nuts. I don't know why I can't see it. Okay. So I'm going to add even a little bit more dark in here because I just, just love the dark color. You could even add black in here if you wanted. Look how vibrant that is when you have that dark. Okay. So I'm going to like go around so all these red dots were in. All of these, 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 in here, all of these, and all of these. So I think I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> and then we're going to turn this into a card. And then I think, would it be pretty to accent maybe just the the middle butterfly because you know I'm going to use black so would it be cool to add just some like black gems in here because I'm going to use black around the outside so maybe we do some some like little black gems in here gems sticking together. You know, maybe just accent this center one with a little bit of black, and then we'll add black around the outside. Let's plan for that, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so now I'm going to get a piece of black cardstock, and I apologize that I'm not seeing whatever you guys, because a lot of you are saying it, but I just don't see it. Maybe some of you don't see it too. Maybe some of us <laughs> just are missing it. Okay, so I'm going to cut this down. Again, you can cut this with master layouts too. I'm cutting it down to three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And then we'll do our greeting and pop that on. So this is going to go on top of here. And then I feel like we need a lighter card base. Even a white card base would really make this stand out. Look at that, how when you get the white on there, it's so beautiful. So let's get this together. I never even cleaned up after Simon Hurley left, so I still have lunar paste, every, all that stuff sitting around here, my sponge daubers. <laughs> Forgot to clean up. Okay, so we've got this on here and then i am going to cut a quick white card base that card base actually was a a top fold so so let me do that i'll back up just a little bit here and i wanted to show you i had done one earlier and you could pop one up if you wanted it to be like a little standout you could pop one up off of there. You could even bend the wings up a little bit and have it look like it's flying off the card. But that's okay. You don't have to do that. And you could cut it out with the coordinating dies. So it would have that nice, you could see it has that nice brick around the outside rather than a white layer around the outside. It's a little different for me. You know, I do a lot of crisp, bright, rainbowy things and a lot of ink blending and stuff. And it's kind of fun once in a while to get a little bit more artsy and a little messy. Okay. 
So this is going to go right on white because I feel like that just brings it all out. And some of you might prefer ivory for this, and ivory would look really nice. But there's something about that stark white that is just really getting me. It feels more like like a fun graphic piece then. Okay, so let's do a quick greeting. Actually, I was thinking about using a greeting from the stamp set, but this might lend itself more to And something like, so very grateful, just coming in from the side to not take away from too much of the butterflies. I kind of feel like that might be a better option. We could put a big, bold greeting across this, but we did so much work to make these butterflies look beautiful that I think we should have the greeting be more subdued. I never know what I'm going to do because I never know how it's going to look. Um, and I might... Let's see here. I'm going to get some glue on here. And I might go with a smaller gem, like a smaller, so that we can still see the gold on the head. You know, just pop that in there. It's a little bit more subtle, but we're still going to add that little pop of black on this. Makes him like the main butterfly. Don't worry, I'll straighten them out if they're crooked. It's the nice thing about um, gluing onto embossing powder is it takes a little while for the glue to dry and you have a few minutes to kind of straighten everything out. That is crooked. That looks straight, this. Just a little extra glue in there. I think that'll do it. A little bit of extra. We could go all the way down, but I'm going to leave it. I don't want to overdo it. And then I will adhere this just with a little tape, a little tape runner. Right on the back. And we'll put that right in, kind of coming off that butterfly, because I do like how the black in here and the black here kind of brings it all together. So let's zoom in a little bit and look at that now. So you can see that shiny embossing and then bleaching out so you get more vibrant color in there. And there's the finished card. Wow. You like that? Okay, that is a wow. <laughs> Ah, well, that was super fun. Very fun to do today. Playing, So we got four techniques in. We got heat embossing. We got bleaching. We got colored pencils and Gamsol. And what else did we get? Maybe we only got three. Colored pencils and Gamsol, bleaching and embossing. All right. That's good. That'll work. <laughs> All right. We're doing a drum roll, please. Yes. We're going to give this one away. <laughs> All right, this beautiful autumn card goes out to Anne Broadway Deshawn. Hey, Anne. Anne. Congratulations. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at GinaKDesigns.com, and I'll get that right out to you. Well, guys, this was so much fun today. I'm going to try to get a five-minute card recorded later today or early tomorrow morning. So we have one for the weekend. And then Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night with another Stamp and Chat Live. We want to thank you all so much for joining us and to remind you to stay safe and healthy because we love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.